this. Give me a second. Okay, it works out. Good morning, everyone. Or maybe it's maybe kind of lunchtime right now. So I will rush through my talk that you get to lunch very fast. So um, yeah, welcome to my talk in Poster Syndrome. Am I suffering enough to talk about it? My name is Madeleine. I'm a DevRel and front end developer at Nine Elements in Germany and also the Roger S organizer. My Twitter handle is Megisha. You will find it on the bottom of my slides. At first, I have an important note for you. Please keep in mind I'm not a psychologist. I will tell you how I discovered the imposter syndrome for myself and find a way to make it feel less bad. And maybe not every point will fit for you, but I hope the experiences I made will help you to escape the bad habits. If you have got any questions during my talk, I will be here on both days, and you can also DM me on Twitter. I would like to tell you the story of my life as short as possible. In high school, it was pretty clear that I'm different to other kids. I read books in the breaks. I hated gossip, wearing only black clothes, reading mangas, and skateboarding, and so on, and I was bullied for who I am and what I am, and I started to questioning myself. What is wrong with me? What did I wrong? And I came to the conclusion, my behavior must be wrong. This is why no one likes me, and I should stop being the creep sitting in the brakes on a bench while reading Harry Potter. I should stop skating, and I should stop being myself. I tried to fit in the role of the teenage girl, but it doesn't work out, and I felt like a fraud and faking my way through it. And my time at school was close to horrible, and I was happy when I left school, but when I started working, it doesn't make a huge difference for me. I wasn't bullied anymore, which was kind of good, I think, but I still was not a real part of the group. And while my colleagues went out for dinner or an after-work party, I was heading back home. We had some nice chats at the coffee machine at work, but I figured out that we do not share any interests. And again, I tried to fit in and tried to book, uh, talk about TV series um, where I only read the last news about it so that I can talk about it, but it felt so wrong again. And I asked myself, what's wrong with me? After a long journey and different jobs, I quit it. I started studying, and within my time at university, I found the Open Tech School and joined the programming workshops. The Open Tech School is a nonprofit organization who teaches people how to code, and in my case, it was HTML, CSS, and also JavaScript for beginners. It was the first time in my life that I belonged to a group of people, and they accepted me for who I am and gave me a good feeling about switching my careers and become a front end developer. They told everyone there, you belong here. And here I am at the JSConf Budapest as a DEFRA and also a front end developer. I'm very happy that a lot of people from the Open Tech School are still in my life. Since I'm a front end developer, I get in touch with awesome, talented people, and I was thrilled about how fast you can learn how to build a website with HTML and CSS. My learning, cur uh, learning curve was like this. You see the period of time and the things I've learned, and it was an amazing feeling to learn so much in this short period of time. But after a couple of months, it was like this. The feeling stepping on the same spot was horrible. I compared myself to the people I've met, and it feels like I'm absolutely stupid. It was hard to leave the comfort zone, and tasks with new programming stuff overwhelmed me very fast. And at least I tried to get tasks who were very easy for me, and I avoid things I have no idea of gives me the feeling I have no idea what I'm doing here and I do not belong here. I started to work harder on my own skills. When I came back from home, I sat down at my desk and tried to solve the programming problems I had during the day. And my day was like eight hours of work at work, four up to six hours at work at home, and nightmares about work at night. And it doesn't work out, and I just talked about it with a friend of mine, and he was like, what's wrong? Everything is awesome, you're doing a great job, you've achieved so much in this short period of time, and it feels like this. Everyone is better than me, I'm never good enough, and I'm overwhelmed. I told him, but he still was like, it's only in your head, stop worrying, you're doing great. 
I started researching where my doubts are coming from, and I just stumbled over a blog post about the imposter syndrome, and I was only scratching on the surface what the imposter syndrome is about and read a lot about it. While doing my research, I found a lot of multiple choice tests and the most asked questions were, maybe you can ask yourself right now if you would like to, does everyone overestimate you? Hell yes. I get paid for a job and I think I do not know enough about it to get paid for it. So yes, everyone is overestimating me. So yes. Do you tend to discuss yourself? I was thinking about that and every time I'm doing something new, I'm questioning, is this the right thing you're doing right now? Is this the correct path you're, go uh, you're going right now? And I was like, hmm, yes, of course. The next thing is you compare your ability to those around you and think they are more intelligent than you are. As I mentioned, I met a lot of amazing, talented and intelligent people and I compared myself every time to those and when it comes at work to some coding discussions and I'm sitting there like this, oh my god, what they are talking about right now, I have no idea, so yes, I think everyone else is more intelligent than me. Does the fear of failure freaks you out? Hell yes. Last week I organized a conference and on Friday um, I headed back home and I was terrified of fear. Will this, will this conference work out? Do I have everything there, what my speakers need, the attendants need? And I was freaking out, so yes, the fear of failure freaks me the hell out of me. Do you decline your own success? Yes. One more time, my conference, it was Sunday in the evening, I was sitting there, have a, have a cup of coffee, and everyone was like, oh my god, it was so cool, it was nice to meet you, it was a cool conference, I was like, mm-mm. I see what went wrong, so mm-mm. It was not that good as you, see, as you say to me, so yes, I declare my own, uh, my own success. The next thing, sometimes you're afraid others will discover how much knowledge you really lack. It's the same thing I told you before when it's come up to uh, calling discussions at work. I should shut my mouth because I'm afraid that someone will tell me, oh no, 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 you're not right and that's lack of knowledge, so next point, yes. You are only successful because you were on the right time at the right place. Or you only knew the right people. Yes, of course. I I'm I'm, could only stand here because I met the people of the, OTS, uh, of the Open Tech School, so absolutely. You can't understand the compliments you receive. Hell yes. That's the most annoying thing I have got in my life. I can't understand some compliments I receive. I'm discussing them the whole time and I make me myself as tiny as I can. So, yes. You'll feel bad when you're not the best or at least very special. I had to think about that again, but it's not that worse for me, but at least I try to be the best and I can get very angry of myself when I'm not very special sometimes or I'm not the best. So, yeah, it works out for me as well. You avoid evaluations if possible and have a dread of others evaluations, uh, evaluating you. Evaluations can be horrible, especially when it came to the point where I have to evaluate other people. In my opinion, I'm not skilled enough to tell people how good or bad their job was, so yes. Do you focus more on what you haven't done? I think, yeah, I'm questioning myself again and again. Did I organize everything? Is everything there for my speakers? Is my talk right now, am I prepared for my talk right now? So I'm focusing, I didn't do a dry run today in the morning, so why didn't I do that? And this is why, uh, what I was focusing on in, in, the, in the speaker room, so yes. Woohoo, 10 points to Gryffindor. But what now? Now I know that I'm suffering from something I have no real idea about, and this was the time where I started to take a deep dive into the imposter thing, and I figured out while reading all the blog posts and papers what I'm doing to myself. I sabotage myself. Let that sink in. I have immense fear of failure, but at the same time I'm terrified of success. And I want to prove my worth, but I worry I don't deserve the success or compliments I receive. I'm not 
likely to ask for a raise. Since I don't see myself as competent, I don't think I'm worth more money, so, yeah. And people like me to turn, uh, tend to work really hard, as mentioned before. I set high standards for myself and try my best to reach them. But no matter how much validation I receive, I've never felt competent. Too long, didn't listen. It's the thinking that makes me believe I'm actually incompetent, unintelligent, and lazy. I'm convinced that I'm, uh, convinced that I'm faking my way through my accomplishments. And it's the fear I will be exposed as the fraud I believe I am. When I figured out all the things, I started thinking about how to stop it in my head. Some people think I'm worth my money, and some people think that I belong here. So I could not be that bad, I think. So I started researching again. Researching is a thing for me, so. While doing research, I learned some techniques which helps me to escape the bad zone and accept the fact that it's not as worse as it seems. You will never be able to get rid of it completely, but it, you can make it feel less bad. And before I will talk about the techniques I discovered over the time, I would like to show you a saying which describes why I struggled so much in my life. The reasons we struggle with insecurity is because we compare our behind the scenes with everyone else's highlight reel. This one was right in the fields. I was comparing myself the whole time with other people, and when I read that quote, I realized that I was barking up the wrong tree. Facebook is the best example to see the highlights reel of everyone. Holiday photos, some nice dish, then Photos with the significant other, where everyone is laughing and only have a great time, and you're sitting there and ask yourself, why do they have such an awesome life? And you're sitting here on your desk and sobbing in worries all the time. Now I've got the quote in my, in my phone, in my notes, and when I'm thinking about that everyone else is living a better life than me, I only read that. It makes me feel better. And maybe it helps you too. So co stop comparing yourself to others. You are an individual and you're worth every penny or compliment you receive. Having idols is a good thing, but they are not you. They are not walking in your shoes and they've made different experiences as you. And maybe they think that they are frauds too, you don't know. You only see the good Facebook posts on social media. And you aren't born to live a life of another person, you're as perfect as you are. Next thing is, everything is only in your head. People who are working with you will acknowledge your work. They appreciate you as the person who you are, and they will tell you when something went wrong. Accept the compliments you receive, because people criticize faster instead of praising you. And imposters try to be perfect. When something is not perfect, it's not properly done, right? So learn to be a healthy perfectionist. Most things are done better, better than perfect, and stop worrying excessively about mistakes or setbacks. Sometimes you have to ask yourself, what would I do if I was not afraid? I asked myself in the last few weeks, would I? Ask my boss for a raise, ask the cute person in front of me out, start a new project, and there are a lot of questions you can ask yourself like in the same way when the fear kicks in, and if this doesn't work out for you, Ask the right people to help you out with your problem. Learn to ask for advice. It can be really hard in the beginning, but a lot of people are really happy to help you out. You don't have to prove that you can solve every problem on your own. I started mentoring people in August and September, and at least I was a mentor at two events right now, and guess what? People will ask questions you cannot answer, and you cannot answer them. But that's good. You don't, know, uh, you don't have to know everything. Stack Overflow or documentations can be your best friends. And it's a good thing to know what you don't know. If that's still not enough to overcome the bad feelings, talk about it if you want to. I'm helping myself right now when I'm talking about it. Maybe you're not into speaking to a huge crowd like me right now but it helps you to keep you aware that you're suffering from something. And especially your friends can be really supportive and help you out with your problem. You only have one thing to do. Bribe your friends. 
Every time one of her friends point out that you're underestimating yourself, spend them a cup of coffee or maybe a beer. But one thing I can tell you, it can be very expensive in the beginning, and maybe you should switch to water and, uh, and some tea, because your friends will suffer from too much caffeine or beer, and with tea and water, they only have to pee a lot, so that's fine. Being wrong or not perfect doesn't make you a fraud. Just keep in mind, the best soccer teams lose, but they, they are not frauds. They know how to kick the ball, right? Or there are many million-dollar companies that sometimes fail as well. Evaluate the impact of what could go wrong by asking yourself, what's the worst thing that can happen to me right now? This will help to eliminate the fear, and the most things we are doing have not, have not a huge impact. Especially in tech, we create software for customers, and maybe they are not amused about a missed deadline, but hey, we're humans, not machines. We should start focusing on providing value and write down your achievements of the day. This one is out of my sketchbook at home, and it's a small list for me from the last week. I helped out an elderly person to enter the, tra uh, to enter the train. I organized a conference on my own. I teach my colleagues something I know. I cooked a really delicious meal for me and my friends, and I wrote a really good part of code. And this can be written down in a diary or only at a Google Doc. It's up to you where you write it down. Especially the small things matter too, like those ones. Keep a file of nice things someone was saying about you. Can you remember the last time when you received a compliment and know exactly the wording? No, me neither. We've forgotten too often the good parts in life, and this is why you should take maybe screenshots and save them when someone writes something good about you, or make notes on your phone when someone gives you an awesome compliment. Take a look at it when you're feeling like a fraud. And what helps me the most, stop commenting compliments. Really, just stop it. Never do this again, just stop it. I was the person who was discussing my, my, uh, the compliments every time and it helped me a lot to appreciate myself and the work I was doing when I stopped commenting on compliments. Give the sender a friendly smile and say thank you for that. And before your thoughts start spinning, take a look at what you've done for the person which gives you the compliment. Ask yourself, would the person give me a compliment if my work was as bad as I think? The answer is no in 99%. And the other 1% of people we would not like to talk about. The last thing is, Take time for yourself. If everything feels horrible and mm, meh, and you're freaking out on the inside, do what you enjoy the most. For me, it's like taking a hot bath or grab a good book, have some quality time for myself. Calm down from the day and forget for a short period of time the cold feeling. If you're freaking out uh, in your office, maybe get a cup of tea, take a break, do sit-ups, pet the office dog maybe, uh, whatever works out for you to calm down. Let's start over with the good parts of being an imposter. And you think maybe now, wait, what? She was telling us the whole time that she suffers from it and now there are good parts of it. Sometimes it's not that bad to suffer from the imposter syndrome. To be an overachiever is not that bad. At least we try to be as perfect as possible in everything we do. So. From time to time, we have to take a step back, calm down, and live with the result, which is maybe not the perfect solution. But if we can accept it, that we don't have to be perfect, it's not that bad to be an overachiever. Do you know people who think they're the best in everything they're doing, and after a few sentences you, you talk to them, you think, hmm, they're not the brightest candle on the cake? Those people are, in my opinion, very annoying. And this is why I think when you underestimate yourself from time to time and promote it to the people, it's not that bad. It's better to surprise the people with what you've done and achieved instead of disappointing them with what they've expected from you because you're overestimated yourself. Maybe you're not suffering from the imposter syndrome, but after hearing the symptoms, you're asking yourself, I think a friend of mine is suffering from the imposter syndrome. What can I do? Maybe someone tells you that they're feeling like a fraud, faking everything, or they're not good enough for the money they get. And you should not say, hey, 
I was last week at the JSConf Budapest and just listened to a talk about the imposter syndrome. You're an imposter, deal with it. Don't do that to anyone. They will start researching like me and spend a lot of time with it because the first blog post I read had the title, You, the imposter. And I was like, oh, wow. And the worrying journey kicks in really badly. Don't do that to anyone. Instead of telling them that they are suffering, give them reasonable feedback. Maybe a colleague of you is questioning themselves the whole time and asks, is this okay what I'm doing? Or maybe, can you take a look at my code again, please? And this more frequently than other colleagues do? Take your time and explain them that the work is good, and especially explain them the why. Maybe the work is not perfect, but you can tell, uh, can tell them too that they can improve here and there something, but also with the why. Complimenting people only because of their fears is not really helpful. Don't compliment them only, make, uh, only to make them feel better. Explain them the why you think like this and the why is the most important thing. But you can also help them with, if you talk about your own fears, if you're feeling comfortable with it. Show the people that they are not alone with their problems. Maybe you're working at a project and you've got a deadline and Every one of you knows customers, right? They can get really angry when you have to say, oh my god, no, in the end of the week it will not work out, we need one another week, so... And they are, nope. We pay for you, so at least deal with it. In the end of the week, the project has to be finished. Maybe you can tell your colleague who is maybe suffering from the imposter syndrome, oh my god, a deadline in the end of the week, of course I'm afraid something went wrong when we deploy it to production. Are you using a a new framework maybe, React, Angular, OneZJS, whatever. You can say, oh, I've never done this before and I'm also afraid it will, what, will not work out in the end. Show the people they do not have to fight the battles alone. To come to an end with this talk, I would like to show you a beautiful phrase I heard while watching Kung Fu Panda. This phrase describes so much how you escape the zone and what you should focus on. Ogwe, the turtle, said to the panda, you are too concerned with what was and what will be. There is a saying, yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery, but today is a gift. That's why it's called the present. If you read over and over that saying, things getting less bad. We are thinking the whole time what we've done wrong and maybe we can see the opportunities we miss every day because of worrying. Last but not least, when we start over a new job, we maybe ask ourselves, was this the right decision? Job offers do not cover everything we are able to do, contain things we've never done, but we are applying for this job because every job offer is nearly the same, right? But there's never be a perfect fit for everyone. And this is why I would like to say to you, to be an imposter is not the exception, it's a rule and everyone suffers from it from time to time. Thank you.